All right, what up, what up, what up, what up, what up, guys? Mr. Sandoval here coming at you guys from my living room. I'm excited. I've connected my laptop to the TV so I can actually have a display in the background. I know you guys can't really see. It, it might be hard to see because I don't know how the glare is working. But I'm excited. I can actually uh, feel like I have a smart board behind me. <laughs> I'm having trouble going on the live for some reason it's not letting me i guess too many of you guys complain so i'm banned from instagram live bummer i was having so much fun uh anyways let me just clarify some things okay we've had three lessons uh three discussions three discussions online there's three videos on youtube as you can tell discussion video number one uh, that one was just the original Cold War discussion with number two. That's gonna be the second part of the Cold War Discussion number three is the one about Cuba and tonight we're going over the Vietnam War So that's gonna be your fourth discussion and that's gonna pretty much wrap up the Cold War and the wars unit So next week we can transition into unit seven um, Just so you guys know on all the three four videos you should comment your name on today's video I want you guys to comment your name. So under this video, comment your name and one thing you miss about school. So for example, uh, yo soy Manuel Sandoval. One thing I miss about school is the people, my colleagues, the people I work with, my neighbors, um, and you guys. <laughs> as a cliche as that sounds, I do miss you guys, and you'll see why today's lesson is uh, a little bit more unique. And and what, what what I mean by I miss you guys, what I mean by I miss my coworkers. You know, I, I it's not the same teaching. I think there's certain factors that contribute, and we'll talk all about that as the lesson goes. Um, so yeah, just big clarification. Watch today's video. Subscribe. <laughs> Am I getting it right? Uh, subscribe to the YouTube. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't care if you subscribe. Watch the video. Comment underneath. Write your name. And uh, one thing that you miss about school, make sure we keep it PG because otherwise YouTube's going to remove your comment. Um, other than that, hey, I'm trying. Doesn't let me connect. Checking connection. It's weird. Maybe I have to like restart the whole thing. Um... Yeah, so like I was saying, three discussions, those three are going to be on your grades for tomorrow. Again, just watch the YouTube videos. There are lessons that are embedded into the uh, canvas in case you want to follow the lesson. I suggest you follow the lesson along with the uh, PowerPoint. Uh, I mean, po use a PowerPoint while you're watching the video or listening to the video at least you don't have to watch me listen to the video watch the powerpoint so i'm explaining both things at the same time for you guys once you're done with the video you're going to comment and once you've done the commenting once you've done watching the video then you go on canvas go to discussions and answer the uh discussion question for each lesson okay there's three this is the fourth one and this one's about vietnam there's three questions that i ask you guys on the discussion uh, board, and then the reason why I'm giving you until Friday is because these three questions are a little bit more elaborate, they're a little bit more challenging, so it's gonna take you guys a little bit more time. So don't worry, this will be the only lesson for the week. Well, actually yesterday, this will be the only lesson for the week. I'm also gonna post another video of you, uh, of your uh, Spring Break project, because the one I did, for some reason, didn't save, and I didn't download it correctly, or oh, I don't know, but I have to, have to recook something tonight for dinner. So stay tuned for uh, tonight's dinner. All right. So let's uh, let's get started. So here's a little tour, and there we go. Boom. Love it. All right. So the Vietnam War. Okay. So I decided I want to call things a little differently. So announcements. I just pretty much announced everything that we're going to be doing in class. Um, motivational quote. I love today's quote. Three ways to fail at everything in life. Complain about everything. Blame others for your problems. And never be grateful. So make sure that in this rough time that we're going through, we're not complaining about things. We're not blaming anyone. And we're being grateful for what we have. 
Okay. All right. The fruit salad. Think of that as like a warm up. <clears throat> okay. I'm just stop. Just stop moving. I'm shaking. <laughs> this is gonna get people sick. Watch. Okay. What is a human element and how does it affect the outcome of a war? So the hum human element is a contribution of human beings in a situation, activity, or process as referred to the human element. So for example, in journalism, a human interest story is a feature that story that discusses a person or, or, or people or a companion animal in an emotional way that presents people and their problems, concerns, or achievements in a way that brings about interest and sympathy or motivation in the reader. So for example, I talked about what do I miss about work? The human element. Okay. And we all can agree this online thing is is weird. It, it It's not the same. I, I understand I can sit here and go over a lesson. I can tell you to do this, tell you to do that, do work. But I'm not going to lie. Like, I miss being in the classroom, man. You get me on this? I, I just, I miss being in the classroom. I miss being able to... Yeah, you guys tell you guys to put your phones away. Tell you guys to not eat in class. I, I miss those, you know, those of you who roll your eyes. I miss those of you who uh, are late to class. Those of you who uh, are judgy or not judgy. I mean, I feel like I'm talking smack. A lot of you, 99% of you guys are amazing. Just, you know, two of you aren't so amazing. <coughs> Ivan, I'm just kidding, Ivan. Kiros, Kiros. I'm just kidding, Kiros. Uh, nothing but respect and love for all you guys. But um, yeah, just that human human element. I think you all are gonna realize that you're gonna miss that. You're, you're you're at home. You're trying to learn, but there's something about being in the class. Even when you're in the classroom with a teacher that you hate, with classmates that you're annoyed, all that embodies what it, the human element of learning is, what education is. So, for us, what is the human element at war? You know, and it's going to be very different from the human element in education to the human element at war to what's going on now. Like right now, we are living in a moment in history that next year I'm going to talk about. That's going to be in the history books. This right here, this pandemic, COVID-19 will be in the history books, which is crazy to me, you know, because we're all living it. So what is the human element in war? So we are going to be discussing Vietnam. Here's a map of beautiful Vietnam. Okay. Boom. Cambodia, Thailand, Laos. Okay. Great, great places. If you've ever had Thai food, amazing. Highly recommend. If you've ever had Vietnamese food, amazing. Pho. Oh my God. Mm. Love it. Okay. But what I need you guys to do is so... Up there, that's China right there. That bad boy is China. Obviously, Russia is going to be way up there. <sighs> After the Cold War, obviously, Russia is trying to convert all these countries into communist countries. Vietnam is one of those countries that gets divided into half. So, literally, where my finger is, that's where it gets divided. This half is, this half is communist. This half is democratic. Okay. One of the things that you need to understand is that Vietnam was occupied by the French. So there's a French influence, and you see that in the cuisine. There's a French influence in uh, Vietnam when Vietnam revolts and, and starts a civil war. So this is an actual civil war. So the Vietnam War is technically a civil war that the U.S. gets involved in. Okay, We support the South, and the North is supported by China and Russia. Okay. Okay. Will you look at that? Saigon. In case any of you guys have ever gone to a Saigon dish, that restaurant right there in the corner of, uh, what is that, Hawthorne and Marine, Saigon dish, that's a Vietnamese place because Saigon is a city. Where is it? Where are you at? Am I, am I tripping out? Mm, well, I can't find it. Where are you? So take a second, look for it. See if you can find it. Really? 
Sagan, look for it. Should be right here. Ho Chi Minh. That used to be called Sagan. So Ho Chi Minh, right there. Ho Chi Minh. That is a new city. That's a new capital. It used to be called. That was the uh, capital of the South Vietnam. It used to be called Saigon. Okay, the current capital is up here, but Saigon is down there, ladies and gentlemen. Well, now it's Ho Chi Minh. And Ho Chi Minh was a leader of the um, Viet Cong. So, Saigon puppet, U.S. imperialism, essentially. What is this? What is this going? By the way, we're about to go through a gallery of photos that I wanted to show you guys. So, take a look at this photo. Okay, what is this? What is what are they? What are these two gentlemen trying to convey? Portray. Okay, take a look at this one. We won't fight another rich man's war. Okay, look at this one. Okay, this is a little deeper, a little bit more intense. You guys know who those two gentlemen are? Give you a clue. One was a famous civil rights activist, and the other one is a famous boxer. All right, now we're actually gonna get into the actual needy greedy stuff. These are all the uh, pictures of the war. Take a look at the landscape. Okay, take a look at the landscape. Pay close attention to the terrain. What do you see? Jungle. Lots of. Vegetables, crops, plants. Boom. Look at that. American choppers. These are American soldiers. Look how deep this photo looks. Okay. That is a capture Viet Cong member. Here are more captured rebel troops. And that right there is not an American soldier. That is a soldier from the South Vietnamese Army. Uh, one of the things, the this picture, by the way, I, I found this picture to be interesting. So one of the things America gets complained about the most when it comes to Vietnam War is that we dropped a lot of bombs. We bombed a lot of villages. A lot of times we didn't know whether there were enemies there or not, but we were infamous for dropping bombs. So that's one of the critiques we get. So we slightly discussed this. For those of you who did the presentation on Vietnam, the Vietnamese by stature were a lot smaller than the Americans. So one of the things that they were able to do is they did this thing called guerrilla warfare. So they fought in very spontaneous attack method strategy. So they would dig these little holes. You look at that. Where it was hard for an American to fit in there. Now we're going to get to the more deeper. These are villagers and these are soldiers over there. Look at that. Boom. I told you one of the things that one of the atrocities that we we did was we we would bomb cities, complete villages. We would completely wipe them out, throw napalms. Uh, napalms, by the way, are just it's a type of bomb that uses these chemicals that burn a lot faster. Look at that! Look at that destruction. Uh, that, by the way, is, is the Vietnam Memorial located over there in Washington, D.C. This is a Vietnam veteran. Okay, so here's the uh, lesson for today. Hey, man, still trying. It's not letting me. It's not letting me.
All right, so the uh, Vietnam War, the war lasted from 1955 to 1975. Uh, Ho Chi Minh led the Viet Cong, which was in the north, and the Soviets supported the Viet Cong. So the Viet Cong, if you guys recall, I gotta go all the way. Boom, the Viet Cong is this part up here, North Vietnam. That was supported by the Russians, the Soviets, and they were led by a guy named Ho Chi Minh, which is why he changed Saigon to Ho Chi Minh City. See, that's what I mean. That, that, that's a flex right there. He won the war. So what does he do? He changes the capital of the South. Names it after him. Okay. So the Americans had this theory called the, oh, look, I'm live. Hey, what up? I'm already kind of deep into this lesson already. 15 minutes in, you guys are going to walk into the uh, latter part of it. You guys get to see the, uh, how the magic gets made. Okay, so the domino theory is that if one country falls to communism, then its neighbors would also follow. So as you can see, America believed that Viet Vietnam fell to communism, then Laos would, Cambodia, Thailand, Burma, India, and Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Okay. So, what up? What am I? 13 followers? I'm famous. I'm famous. What up? What up? What up, boys? What up, boys? All right. So, uh, this is crazy, right? So, we had five presidents during the Vietnam War. Eisenhower, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard Nixon, and General Ford. Five presidents served during the Vietnam War. Uh, we practice this thing called MacArthurism, which is that we made accusations of treason or we accuse people of being senators without any actual proof. This was coined by Senator Joseph McCarthy. Uh, President Truman created the House of Un-American Activities Committee, which is known as the HOAC, to hunt down communists working for the government or city citizens. So we had this fear of communism here in America. We had a race with the uh, Russians. This was known as the arms race. This was the building and the stockpiling of nuclear weapons in America and Russia. And we also had the space race. This was a race between uh, the U.S. and the USSR to see who reached space first. What up? What up? What up? What up? What's popping? What's cracking? What are you guys up to? Don't worry, you'll see the you'll see the full video. All right, so uh, like I said, they uh, practice this thing called guerrilla warfare in Vietnam. This was a form of irregular warfare in which a small group of combatants, such as armed civilians or irregulars, use military tactics, including ambushes, sabotage raids, petty warfare, hit and run tactics, and mobility to fight a larger and less mobile traditional military. So one of the things you should have noticed is that the Americans were far more superior than the uh, Vietnamese. Even with the help of the Russians, the Americans were far more superior so the americans in america we started to draft poor minorities because college kids and the wealthy were deferring from uh, joining the war can anyone name one famous person who deferred i'll legit get a, give extra credit if you comment also include in the comment one famous person who deferred who did not go to war even though they were drafted or they were told to join the military uh, the war officially ends in uh, 1973 through the uh, Paris Peace Accords. That's when the U.S. officially withdrew from the war, but the Civil War didn't stop. I told you this was a civil war that the U.S. got involved in. And uh, Vietnam is now one of the five communist countries in the world. It's China, Vietnam, Laos, North Korea, and Cuba. What am I doing? Oh, I don't know. I'm trying to teach. All right, so this is, this is what I mean. This, this, this was a little longer. Uh, one of the things that was happening at home, Okay, we have massive protests. People are not happy with the war. We don't want to be part of the war. The civil rights movement is also happening, right? And then there's also a gay rights movement. Um, President Nixon signs a law that's known as the uh, Control Substance Act, which officially outlawed cannabis for the use of, for use. Uh, President Nixon also, by the way, doesn't end the uh, does end the war. By the way, he uh, creates this thing called the uh, Vietnamization, which is the gradual withdrawal of troops from uh, Vietnam. But ironically, he also chose to bomb and attack Cambodia and Laos to instill the fear in the North Vietnam. Uh, America won almost every battle, but they were considered to be losing the war by the media. 
Uh, most of the men who fought, by the way, were volunteered. They were not drafted. Roughly 70% of them were volunteered. And the, um, the media controlled the way Americans felt about the war. Okay, cool. Sweet. This can actually put me there. Ah, oh, look, we're famous. 15 people. Weak. Oh, let me take a break. What's going on? What's popping? What are you guys up to? Hey, if you're watching this, 20 push-ups. If you're watching this, 20 push-ups. This is for discussion. For, but don't worry, I recorded the YouTube video. And the YouTube video is going to be uploaded. But if you're watching this, hey, 20 push-ups. The Vietnam War lasted roughly about 20 years. From 55 to 75. So you have about 20 years that the war lasted. Hey, let's go. 20 push-ups. All right. So for this one, because this is the actual lesson right here. Okay. For your canvas discussion, one of, one of the things I kind of want you guys to do. I don't know if you guys can see this. There we go. Boom. What up? Like a human. What do I look like? Y'all handicap. So we talked about this earlier. The Americans won the war. Okay. They did. When it actually comes to the battles, when you actually look at the one-on-ones, America defeated the Vietnamese in a lot more battles. But... At home, the way the media portrayed the war, we made it seem like we lost the war. And I think that's one of the reasons why people don't consider this a complete victory because we were demoralized and because we walked out of the war. So this is how we lost the war and won the war, right? So we didn't lose it fighting. We won almost every major battle that occurred in Vietnam. What we did is we... uh had too many problems at home and too little people supported the war. And one of the things the media was doing is that they villainized the way America was viewed. Okay. When you look at some of these pictures, you get to see that human element I talked about. You get to see the fear that instilled in people. You get to see the way that they demonized America in this war. Now, were we saints? Absolutely not. We, we did atrocities. We abused our power. We killed innocents, innocent people. In the name of what we thought was a good thing, you know. So what ends up happening is all these negative things that we're doing end up getting to the people. And the people end up believing that we lost the war. When in reality we won the war. But to the eyes of the media, the way they portrayed the war is that we lost it. Why? Because they would do things like... Show pictures like this. Right? That's... That's the human element. Fear. People scared. Okay. That's the human element. That child right there. Hope. He's looking up. He's, the, the, the kid doesn't look like he's scared. The kid looks like he's looking up to that soldier. Right? That's the human element. Protests. People not agreeing. Supporting violence. Okay, that's a monk who decided to burn himself to protest the war. Okay, that's the human element. When you grab these pictures and you show them and you display them in America, people start to negatively view the war. And when people start to not approve of the war, all the soldiers who are at the war, they feel like they're not supported. So if you're a soldier and you're fighting and you're winning, but then no one supports you, you don't feel like you're winning, right? So imagine, a lot of you can relate to this. You go home and you bring great, amazing grades. And yet somehow your parents say, nah, not good enough. So you at the end of the day don't feel like you're doing a good job because you're not pleasing someone who, who doesn't agree with what you're doing. You can have straight A's and one B. Okay, that was America. Straight A's and one B. They won every single battle. Got one B. Got one, failed one class. But people just saw the F and people said, nope. We suck. We're doing horrible. So you, as a soldier, you're going to feel completely demoralized. You're not going to want to fight. Just how you guys, you feel demoralized. You don't want to learn. You don't, you don't want to study anymore because nothing makes your parents happy. 
So that was just an example. Okay, so for your Canvas discussion, what I want you guys to do, bro, can you guys not jump off? What I want you guys to do for your Canvas discussion, okay, is answer these two questions. Minimum four sentences per question. That's what I'm giving you guys until Monday, I mean, until Friday to get this done, okay? Question number one is, what role does the media play during the time of war, and how does the human element, remember the human element is anything that makes us human, for example, emotions, how does how does it use the human element, okay? So what role does the media play during the time of war? Again, the media is news outlets, social media, anything that influences people, articles, newspapers, television, anything, okay? How do they, what role do they play during the time of war and how do they use the human element? And second question, do you think the media has instilled more fear in people in regards to COVID-19? Give three examples of how the media has used the human element to this, during this pandemic. So those are your two questions, four sentences per question. Those are already posted on your ca canvas. And there's gonna be one more thing. I want you guys to go through these photos and pick photos. I think I told you to pick three photos that resonate with you the most and just kind of talk about the photos and how they how they feel, what you see in this photo, if you can make any connections or anything like that. The questions are gonna be already on canvas. Cool. All right, I'm out. Take care, be safe.